F7, the mop. I remember this problem from long ago. There you go, from Flickr. A nice picture from Jim Champion's collection of a mop. And a nice worker there working with the mop. So we're going to do the mop problem. We want the force necessary so the mop moves across the floor at constant speed and then find the angle so that no matter what force you apply, the mop will not move. And we're given some coefficient of friction. This will be static friction, so it would be mu s. And we'll just go ahead and let that be mu. So we go ahead and give ourselves a sketch here. And for the sketch, a person, a mop on the floor, like that. There we go. And we'll go ahead and define the angle to be relative to the vertical. So we give a force diagram next. And for the force diagram, we'll have a force. I'm gonna head and do it this way so that you know the mop head there. We're gonna neglect, you don't need to worry about the, the, the handle. Uh, just focus on the mop. That's helping us transmit the force to the mop. So we're interested in the forces on the mop. So we have this force and the angle is respect to, in fact, if you were to have this angle there, then, so these angles would be the same when you have that across like that. So that's angle theta. And then here you have the normal force pushing up on the mop have your friction in the opposite direction. So we're picking, you know, going to the right as positive. That's the direction of the motion of the, of the mop. And then, and then here is mg. So now we're ready for the equations. Newton's laws. And here we can sum the forces in the x direction would be F sine of theta, opposite side, point to the right, minus F going back is MA, which is zero because we're going with a constant speed. All right, so the problem was given as a constant speed, going across the floor with a constant speed. And then the sum of the forces in the y direction would be n. You know, it's always good to go ahead and give your plus signs here, your reference. So n going up minus f cosine theta going down, and then minus mg going down, and that's equal to zero. And then we have the auxiliary equation, the friction force is mu times n. Actually, this is going to be kinetic. Let me go ahead and put that kinetic in there just to remind us, because that's moving, and we're going to need the static when we're not moving. So probably, probably good here to just not not do this because we got two of them we're dealing with in this problem. It can get confusing. We've got a static and a kinetic, and for this problem, we want the kinetic one. But in the second question of the problem, we're gonna need the static one. So, so let's go ahead and keep that as the kinetic one. So then here, I use these two equations to get rid of the N. So that would mean that the friction is mu K. So N is gonna be, if we bring the MG on the other side of the equation and the F cosine that's what, that's what N is. N is mg plus F cosine theta. And then when I put that in for N, the mu k is out there and I got it. Then the idea is to look at the top equation. 
and put in for the friction now. This thing goes in there. Mu K Mg plus F cosine theta. And that's going to be equal to zero. So this means F sine of theta is equal to, just put this on the other side of the equation for now, and then what I would like to do, well, you know, probably, and this is when you do math, you do change your mind. It looks like here, since I want that F and it's in two places, maybe just go ahead and factor that out. This is the sine of theta minus mu k cosine of theta and then minus mu k m g equals zero. So I prefer now to work with this top equation to get this. And then I can see that I can bring the mu k m g to the right side and then divide by this and I'm finished. So this is the force that you would need to go at constant speed across the floor. Now the second question was the angle so that the mop won't move. So in the second case, everything's going to be the same, but now for the second, the second part of the problem. So this was the first part of the problem here that we did. This is part one. And notice, if you want to include step four, you could just have here solve, and that's all this stuff over there. Okay, so for step two, I had the same equation, but now we're talking about static. We have the static, so we have the S, mg, mu s sine of theta minus mu s cosine of theta. So we're not gonna move, but we want to know what happens. See, we want the force to need an infinite force, like you, you can't do it then, you know, if the force goes to infinity, and that's gonna happen when the denominator goes to zero. So we want the condition, the sine of theta minus mu s cosine of theta equal to zero. So that means the sine of theta is mu s cosine of theta. And that means the tangent, it's a nice little result, is equal to mu s. So the angle would be the inverse tangent of mu s. I kind of, I kind of like this equation, this form, I, that looks cool. But either way it works. So these are your answers here.